Brookfield Agricultural uh, Commission's meeting of April the, what, what are we, the 12th, aren't we? Something like that. 11th. 11th, we're still on the 11th, all right, good. Uh, we're uh, having a bead presentation this evening from Jim Metcalf from North Brookfield, and, and he will also enlighten us on other things bees, as well as the relationship between USDA and SCORE, so hang on for that portion of the meeting. So with that, Jim, without further ado, thank you, welcome. Thank you very much, Lawrence. Um, the I guess I can get the USDA score stuff kind of out of the way of first, but because for the last I don't know 10, 12 years since I retired, I also I, I'm a volunteer with SCORE, and what we do is help farmers and small businesses and all kinds of things like that get started and get going. So we counsel them and stuff. And, and um, so in, within the past year, USDA and SCORE got together and, and now they want uh, a lot of us to concentrate on farms and food, uh, food growers as well as people that make uh, various food products. So, it, I mean, I've been around farms all my life, so it's nothing new for me, but uh, it's fun to listen to some of these score people from Boston, because they think farming is is uh, buying a bag of carrots and stop and shop. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, but anyway, we do that, and the fun thing about it, Claire saw it, that I wrote an article for SCORE on how small towns can do much better than they do, you know, because with a lot of vacant storefronts and stuff. And, and uh, one of the SCORE people in Tucson, Arizona, just sent me a note saying that they're distributing that article to all these isolated towns and Indian reservations in Southern Arizona. And they're gonna actually counsel these people on a thing called Skype, I guess it's it's on the you sit in front of the computer and they everybody takes a picture of everybody else and they talk. So it's getting a little too fast for me, but, <laughs> but they're doing it pretty good. Anyway, tonight we talked to you folks last year a little bit about beekeeping and new people starting up beekeeping, and uh, tonight what we want to talk about a little bit is is uh, do you have to be a weightlifter to keep bees? Um, and most of you, let me ask you a question. How much does a honeybee weigh? Anybody know? Single bee? Single bee. A fraction of a pound. A hundredth of a pound. <laughs> yeah, it is. It's actually a thousandth or a tenth, a twenty-five thousandth of, it's a tenth of a gram. And if you have a hive full of bees, there's 12 pounds of them in there, and there's like 60,000 bees in a hive. So it's only 12 pounds, so that's no big deal. So anybody, no matter what, how much of a weakling they are, should be able to keep bees and just lift 12 pounds. Um, now, the, the uh, two or three years ago, my doctor told me, my wife and I do beekeeping, but we, we, over the years, used to pollinate a lot of uh, uh, growers in the central mass. And, and of course, you're moving hives all the time. So the doc told me I, I couldn't move more than 30 pounds or lift more than 30 pounds or I'm going to drop right there. So since that time, we started thinking about how to lighten up the weight of hives and, and how to move them you know, where you're not exerting yourself a lot. Because it, frankly, uh, like there's a, a class going on right now in Worcester County, Worcester County Beekeepers putting on, and there's something like 300 people in that class want to learn how to keep bees. And most of them don't know what they're getting into. I mean, they think it's, it's 12 pounds of bees in a box in the backyard. <laughs> so, so, so We'll go over this a little bit. Maybe um, it'll make sense for some of you. We can. This isn't so much a presentation as it is a 
give and take talk, so please just jump in and yell out. To start with, we were talking about how much does it weigh. <clears throat> if you looked at like this white box over here, let me get this back just a little bit so you guys can see that. This, this box, if you looked at this box of September, October, where it's coming into almost fall, winter, the weights on that thing, the, the bottom box with the bees and they got honey around them and, and eggs and brood and stuff, will go about 75 pounds just in that box, you know, box in the bees. <clears throat> and in this part of the world, you need to go through winter with 100 pounds of honey on top of that. So that second box is, will be 100 pounds. Now all of a sudden, if when we'd have to move those back from some grower, that's close to 200 pounds. <laughs> So I'll show you how my wife and I used to move them. But then that, that's what the bees need to get through the winter. Bottom box and that's 100 pounds. And then anything on top of that that they would gather would be for us to take off. And, and we use like three quarter size boxes or half size boxes. But a, a, a three quarter size full is a 75 pounds. Again, that's the stuff the doc told me I can't touch anymore. Um, so if you look, you know, this picture over here, those stacks are probably four or 500 pounds. And, and one thing that happens if they're on soft ground, a lot of them will just roll over because <laughs> they're top heavy. Um, so when we started looking at this, how do we lighten it up a little bit? <clears throat> the normal hives in the, in the United States are 10 frames, and I already gave you the weights. You know, it's about uh, 75 to 100 pounds a box. A shallow, like half-size box on top would be about 30 pounds on it, 30, 40 pounds. And that's still pushing it. So I started looking around, Beekeepers around the world are kind of in one group, so we talk to each other a lot. And there was a fella in the United Kingdom that said, well, <clears throat> let me tell you what I do, because I got the same problem. He says, instead of having full boxes, I'll put a full box on the bottom, but then put half boxes on top of it. Two half boxes. So, and they're, and they're called nuke boxes, because normally you'd raise a nucleus hive in them, but but you could put two four-frame nukes on top of a deep box and it'll fit perfect. So now all you really have to carry is 40 pounds if they're full, 40 pounds deep. And then if you stacked smaller ones on top of that, 30 pounds. Or if you go to a half size, you can go down to like 12 pounds. So this is, this is one way that we've started buying uh, and building boxes that will fit this kind of configuration. And there's a guy in Vermont that does this all the time and, and works out quite well. So, so one way to lighten up the load is to do this. <clears throat> Questions or comments or problems with this? Or, so you just, you leave that bottom box and take the other ones? Okay. Yeah, yeah. And, <clears throat> And see, like in springtime, all winter the bees move up the stack. So by spring, that bottom box is pretty empty, and it's, you know, it's, it's well under 40 pounds, could be 30 pounds or less. So it's, you know, it's not a big deal. It, it gets heavy as they fill it throughout the summer, but if you leave it on its stand for the winter, you're good, and you just have to manipulate the top ones. But this, this, we're just starting this, but this sounds like a real neat way to start lightening it up a little bit. Now the way you've got that picture there, is that actually the, the, the broad side of the box that we're looking front, at? Front, if you were looking at it, front end, this side, from the front. So there's two back to back sitting on top of the Yeah, right there'd be two, it'd be split down this way okay. and two sides. Yeah. Gotcha. <clears throat> um, now some other ways, because when we were looking around, there's other ways to keep bees that, that um, 
again, it's built on lightening the load. In, in, especially in Africa, there's beekeeper, and they do it really in the States as well, but it's called a long hive. And what they do is instead of building the stack up, it goes sideways. So you could even start them in the middle if you want, or start them at one end or the other. And as they start bringing in honey, you're, you're, you actually have like a divider and you can just keep moving the divider so that they have hot, uh, frames to work on. So then how you, how you work on it is you pick up the roof of it or the cover, it's usually hinged, and you just pick them out a frame at a time. And that's not bad if you don't have to move them to grow it, <laughs> you know, if you had it in the backyard and stuff. And there's a lot of people do this because a single frame is like 12 pounds if it's a full frame and full honey. So uh, people will take them out and they'll put them in like a, like a camping cooler, you know, where you can close the top and the bees won't get at them. And then in Eastern Europe, it's, uh, it was really started in Slovakia, they have bee houses, and in, a lot of them in Germany and so forth. And all of these things here are hives, and they're all different colors, of course, so the bees can pick out theirs. But you work these things from the back. You don't take them out, you go into the building, and you slide the frames out sideways. So there's a, a door that opens and you pull them out sideways. And it, I mean, it's a pretty neat way of doing it, but I often wonder, well, what happens if you're gonna work all those hives all day long? Do you get that building full of, full of bees? So they must have a, you know, a way to let them get out. And then, um, I don't know if you ever heard about this one. There was a father and son in New Zealand a couple years back that invented something called a flow hive. And so they put it all over the internet because they wanted people to give them money to start the business. Now the theory of this thing is you never have to open it up. All you do is turn the valve and the honey comes out. Everybody wants that. <laughs> you don't have to get stung, you don't have to work bees, nothing. You just turn it. And how it works is, is in a hive, you've all seen comb, you know, it's, it's these little uh, sections of the bees, of course, fill them up. Well, this thing, when you, when you actually move a lever, it, it, it moves each side of that comb off each other. So, in theory, the, the honey's gonna flow down out of these things and flow out and look nice like this, just filling up jugs and just put a label on it and take it right out to the farm stand. Now, the, and there's one of these in uh, North Brookfield on the back side of the lake. Uh, you can see it from the road. Um, what, you know, when you go around back of Lashway, there's, you've got to look for them, uh, but there's, there's one of these flow hives sitting there because the guys that bought it asked me about it. I said, I'm not sure because these things were designed to work in hot climates. I mean, honey is very, you've seen honey, it's like molasses, and, and in a cold climate, it ain't gonna flow, no matter how much you open it. So, they were really designed for hot climates, or it would flow if it was almost liquid, like watery honey, which isn't good, because they'll ferment if it's too watery. So, I'm not sure how these are working out, but. They're selling a ton of them because, again, people think the magic of no work, just turn, <laughs> turn, the, turn the handle and I'll just fill up the jars. So if you want to invest in that company, they're, they're looking for investors. Um, here's some, just a couple other designs because what I'm going to be getting at is is to try to provoke people that are inventors or thinkers to come up with new designs. But there's, in, in uh, especially in Germany, this started, it's all plastic hive. It's, it's almost like a, like a camping cooler. It sits on a couple of things and it's sold to people that want to set something up in a small backyard or put it on a flat roof of a house someplace or something. 
And it's, it's that long hive, again, it's, it doesn't stack up, it just goes sideways, but it's plastic and it's light and, you know, easy to use. So this is very attractive to people that want, you know, backyard beekeeping. <clears throat> the other problem is people in wheelchairs, handicapped people, they should be able to keep bees as well as anyone else. And so there's been some designs like this one. It's, it's on a, a foundation that actually tips so the guy can come up to it in his chair and pull the hive over on himself and, and manipulate it and work it. This one here, the guy set it up almost like that indoor Slovakian hive, but it's got windows so he can observe it and then open a door and pull frames out sideways. And this, you know, this is, this is a real need in beekeeping or any kind of agriculture. I mean, we, we all uh, bowled through stuff, you know, lifting and moving stuff, but uh, folks that are handicapped need, a, need some equipment made for them. So I'm trying to provoke people to think about that sort of stuff. And then this one is, is just come out. You can keep them in your living room. Yeah. <laughs> um, and, and you just have a little hose going out the window. <clears throat> and you can just add these, these modules, I guess, you know, until you get the whole wall full. And, and um, nobody's jumping at that. <laughs> there's, I mean, there's people that would love something like that. And I don't know how, I guess each one can unhook somehow or other so you could you know, if you're going to take honey out or something, you could unhook them. But so much for how to make them lighter or, or hot, you know, hive configurations. The, the uh, other thing I wanted to talk to you about a bit is uh, how to move them. <laughs> so um, again, we try this this hive. This young beekeeper is trying to haul in her wagon. Is if it's full, it's going to be up to 150, 175 pounds, and uh, she's got looks like she got good wheels on the wagon to get through the field. But it's still the higher it gets, the heavier it gets. So talking a little bit about lifting and moving, especially if you're moving from, from grower to grower. Here's some, the ways my wife and I had done it over the years. In, in fact, this is our lifter here. Uh, a, one of the beekeepers was a shop teacher in Auburn. And about 30, 35 years ago, he built this for us. It's just uh, ash sticks, but it, it, and it's got two metal plates that grab the handholds on the hive. So as you pick it up, it just kind of cinches in on it. And we've moved hundreds and hundreds of hives in the middle of the night all over orchards and stuff with, with this contraption. They, they also sell them uh, supply places like these guys. It's a metal one. And you, you know, you, two people can pick up stuff and you just, you, cutting the weight in half. So that's the way we used it for years, a lot of years. And then the other thing we used, this isn't our rig, but um, it's one of those um, hydraulic uh, cranes that you can buy like at uh, what is it? Harbor, Freight. Harbor Freight, yeah. And we bought one of those and put it in our truck. The, it didn't work out that well because we had a cap on the truck so that you know, you couldn't, you could get a small one up and onto the tailgate, but it was hard to really get full value out of this thing. So I keep thinking I'm going to install it on the flatbed that we use to move them around. But as we get older, we put less and less on that flatbed. <laughs> so, and then some people, if it's a stationary thing, they put like a, a 
there's a tripod over it with a, some kind of winch or a hand crank or a coffin lifter or something, and you can just pick up boxes like that. Um, and then other, just to show you some varieties of things moving, most, most people just try to use an old-fashioned hand truck, you know, grab it and, and move it to where it's going. This one, I don't think it's going to work that well because you can see the, the, the tires on this one are like for a warehouse, not a muddy field. So, it, you know, it's not much good in there. There are people use four wheel garden carts and wagons and stuff. Um, there's one bee supply house that sells this thing that like, these are like annual iron in they're built the same dimension, so it comes into the to the box and just grabs the box, and as you pick it up, you can then wheel it around. But I mean, you can move them, but there's not much lift to them. And then uh, there's a whole bunch of people that try to modify uh, wheelbarrows. You know, take the box off from it and rig it so that you can get them. And I even saw one in Europe that somehow the guy came up to a hive and just, it was all kind of loose and as he picked up on the handles, the thing would snag the box and, and move it around. And then the one I like best is this guy <laughs> that actually has got 24 hives here <laughs> on this motorcycle or tricycle or whatever it is, but um, that's that's a neatest one. I'd love to get one of those. Can't you pick them up like you track them? Um, you can, um, because we have a small Kubota that I, I take the bucket off and put forks on, um, and I. The problem with the tractor, I, when I was moving with the tractor, um, I should have strapped them, because when you start bouncing, the thing bounced off. <laughs> and opened up on the ground, and that Kubota's not fast enough to get away from him. But, <laughs> but, but, it, but yeah, I can, I can do it with, with the tractor. And, uh, you can bolt down, you know. Yeah, yeah. What, what we, I don't know if it's the next, yeah. What we did buy to move them is we bought an old um, golf cart at the end of the season. And it, the gas ones are better. The electric ones, they'll die right when you're farthest away from the house. But the, these electric ones, I mean, this gas one, we had a box, aluminum box put on the back of it, and we can carry two full hives on the back of that thing. And so it's a question of just lifting them onto the air, and it's almost the same height as the pickup, so if you can get them out to the, Pick up, you can slide them right on the pickup. So that's that's kind of. What, and the other thing is, this thing will get in closer to the hives than the Kubota, with, you know, everything hanging off the back of the track and stuff. Um, at this point, what we did a couple years ago was we were trying to figure out how to solve this problem. So we found out that Worcester Polytech, the the engineers, before they graduate, they have to do some kind of community project. So we talked to the professors about this idea of lifting and moving hives, and he, he and she, there were three of them, or two of them, I guess, thought it'd be a great project for mechanical engineers. So they put it on the board and asked for volunteers, and we got two women and a man. Two women were no problem at all, because what we did is we made them suit up and work the bees. And so while they were trying to lift them and move them by hand, of course the bees are giving them advice, just, you know, flying around. So, and like I said, the women were no problem, they just talked back to the bees. The guy was a big problem. He, uh, he didn't want to listen to the bees or, <laughs> or be around them. But these kids came up, and I can say that, my age, but they came up with uh, designs, and if you if you want to Google it, and you can get their whole 
hundred some odd page report with all these various designs. It, if you Google this, this thing, WPI Hive Lift, and you'll get the report, it's a PDF file. Um, this, they went through a number of designs. This is their final one. And it kind of looked like a medieval thing that would throw fireballs into a castle. <laughs> I mean, it would, I shouldn't knock it, but it, you can see it's got, it's got four, I don't know if you can see it, it's like a wagon on the bottom. It's got four pneumatic or four uh, uh, wheels underneath it. And the thing was supposed to move up against a, a hive stand and you could crank from the top and pick up a hive and then move away from the hive stand and this floor would slip out and you could drop it on the floor, pull it in on the wagon and move it. And we just, we were going to build one like this, but we said, boy, you know, it's, there's a lot of weight and stuff like this manipulation to it. So we, we didn't go with that design. Um, one of their earlier designs, and it's the one I'll show you live in a couple of minutes. Their, one of their earlier designs was a two wheel <clears throat> hand truck. And this thing is built on a, on a, a hand truck from Tractor Supply. It's a, it's a regular agricultural hand truck. Uh, it was the hot, tallest one we could find, and it had straight, you know, straight bars to it, so we could whoop, get back to, so we could run up and down these straight bars with a lift, um, and it's powered by a, a winch off a boat trailer to pull stuff up and down, and we got it. We uh, actually had a, a friend of ours who runs a metal shop in Vermont built one for us. I got it here with me tonight, but um, he he thought the thing would fall over frontwards, so he put a this yellow leg on it that would go out front. So we used that a couple of times, but it's too big to get in the truck, so I took it off tonight. Um, and the the um, the lift runs on um, what's those boards that the kids use? Uh, skateboard. Skateboard. It runs on skateboard wheels that run up and down this this bar. Um, and then the only other thing that we had to figure out was how this thing here. Like these red things slide back and forth to grab the handhold on a hive. And then when it snags in, how do you hold it in tight? We were going to use like a bungee cord around the front, but that didn't seem too good. So all we used, you can see it here, is just an old regular old bar clamp that kind of taped in and you and it just uh, welded a bigger handle on the end of it and so you just a couple of turns and you snag it right in um, and you can see from the picture it's it's you can just you know lift it off a we use like maybe 16 inch high hive stands lift it off the hive stand and drop it either in the back of a truck if we're in the field somewhere or even drop it in the back of that uh, golf cart and stuff and, and it works pretty slick um, and I'll show, I want to show you the actual uh, piece, but just to kind of put it together is why I'm trying to show this to you is beekeeping is really heavy <laughs> and we need people to think about ways to lighten it up. like. You don't have to make a hive out of a big box like this. A hive can be made out of anything. I mean, bees will stay in most anything. You just have to make it big enough or, or compartmentalized, like going up a living room wall so that, you know, they'll put honey away and stuff. And then, um, and, it, and we need 
hives that are new for people that are, are, are weak, there's like in this, um, this, uh, not, this uh, beekeeper class that's going on, well over half of those beekeepers or potential beekeepers are women. And they've told us that they can't lift these 200 pound things, you know, and, and so they need some kind of lifting devices or smaller size hives or stuff to do it. And they're, right now there's like a thousand beekeepers just in Central Mass. And a lot of them, or not a lot, but a substantial number of them give it up, be, give up the beekeeping because it's too heavy. They can't pull these things off, you know, full of and stuff. So, any questions at all on the, on the uh, kind of the things I was trying to show you in terms of weight or? I have a silly question. Yeah. Why do you have to move the hives? Can't well, you take them, the, the um, frames out and put them on the frames out individually? You can. Or we, is it just not time efficient? No, no. We, we have to move them more than anybody because we, we were pollinating. So like there's a, a there's a blueberry grower that we go in there for two weeks and then out. Okay. So we're not a big commercial uh, pollinator, you know, with a big uh, you know, 18 wheel truck and stuff. You move it in half a dozen hives or stuff like that. So that's primarily the moving. And, and there's a lot of beekeepers that want to chase the bloom. You know, uh, like the big thing in, in this area of Massachusetts is um, locusts, black locusts in the spring. And it, it gives you a honey that's like watercolor, pure, transparent. Well, most of those locust trees are around the Worcester Airport. So if you want to sneak in there to grab, you know, you've got to move your hives in there. Cause you just can't give bees in Brookfield a map. <laughs> How to get to the airport. But that's, I'm not being cute, but yeah. that's the reason is you either move them from grower to grower or if you want to move them chasing the bloom or, uh, or, the, or the other thing people have to move them for is if a hive um, uh, swarms and gets disrupted or something, if they just want to move them from here over to the table, it's a problem. They, you have to move them like three miles away and let them get used to that and then come back and move them to the table so that they orient. They just won't move like in short distances. So it's those kind of crazy things. And the other, um, I'll move this up in front, but I'll show you this, this rig that this uh, metal guy, uh, uh, built for us, and again, it's 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 on a pretty rugged, uh, really an ag uh, two-wheel cart. It's got heavy wheels, so they don't you know, go out in the mud and stuff. And it's kind of got a noisy boat tree like that. But uh, we grab it and just pull it up. So you can visualize a stack of these things. I mean, you could move them, you know, fairly heavy. And this is the, the uh, some of the, I saw one in Europe that to snag the box, they had like a spring-loaded lever that you pull the lever in it and it would grab it. We just couldn't figure out how to design something that would be cheap and work. We wanted to, the, these WPI engineers wanted to design something that anybody could either build or have somebody, a blacksmith or someone around, build it for them. So it's this, and, and we, we just snag the boxes with just an old bar clamp and just pull it in and, and it grabs it. So nothing fancy, nothing special. Um, so, so Jim, did they look into the boxes themselves as far as everything seems to be wood, three quarters, three eighths? Yeah half inch material, did they look into any other material or oh, yeah. would, would other materials make sense? Other ones really make sense. What's coming out more and more are, are um, polystyrene, plastics. Uh, we know a beekeeper in Ireland 
and he bought all, he's running, I think he's trying to run 300 hives, but he bought uh, these plastic styrene boxes out of Poland, and he paints them, but um, it's, he said it was as cheap or cheaper than, you know, wood boxes. With all the plastics between here and Lumster and whatnot, with all the plastics folks around here. Oh, yeah. There would be something that could be something. Absolutely. We, I mean, we, for example, we use plastic frames. You know, most people use wood frames. We use a lot of wood, but we've bought these molded plastic frames and we'll just paint them with beeswax so that in the hive, in the dark, the bees figure it's just another <laughs> wood frame. So. so plastics have, with molding and so forth, they really have the ability to do it. I mean, this, this box was, really designed around the time of the Civil War. And it's never changed. And so the whole beekeeping industry, the, the uh, honey producers and the pollinators, just built equipment around it. So either uh, tractors or they use a lot of bobcats that come in and grab uh, pallets full of these hives, you know, four or six hives on a pallet. You see them up, Brookfield Orchards will We'll have them every spring they'll, in a few weeks. You know, they'll come in and drop them off. Or Ragged Hill will do the same thing. They just, they're on pallets. Now that's too heavy for us hometown people. But, but uh, anyway, they built their equipment around this Civil War era box. So there's, you know, there's nothing sacred about it. I mean, you, we visited beekeepers in Poland years ago, and some of them keep bees in hollow trees. You know, they'll cut logs and stack them up this way. And they built cut doors into them, you know, with leather hinges and, and do them that way. So there's nothing magic about how you do it. So. Other questions or comments or? Yeah, if you're gonna move these things around, don't the bugs get mad? We we talk to them. We, uh, <laughs> yeah. They're all bugs. We, all yeah. bugs. Okay. One one is you don't call them bugs. They get very upset. <laughs> <laughs> He's always saying you have to talk to them. We, be nice yeah. to we yeah we she's the one that is always talking to them. I'm kind of slam banging them around, and she's you know talking like whoop 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 move move move. <laughs> But, but they, yeah, they get mad, but you use smoke to kind of disorient them, or you spray them with sugar water, you know, in the springtime when wood pollinate, uh, you'd spray them a little bit with water and that kind of, they're taking care of that, licking it off their back, so. So they're really very friendly. I mean, we, you know, we have all of ours are named. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> you've seen them, you know, you've seen how fuzzy bees are. Yeah. 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 We shear ours for... <laughs> we we uh, shear ours for bee wool, yeah. Who does your shearing for? Uh, we try to do it. we got a small set of clippers. Uh -huh. but, uh, I got some sheep. You want to come over and slide them? <laughs> they're too big. We, we know how to do bees, but we can't. In fact, last year we had a full crop and we made one glove. <laughs> We're hoping for we're hoping for the second glove this year. Anyway, if if there's nothing, other questions and stuff, I really appreciate you folks taking the time. Uh, you said tractor supply. What does something like this cost? The 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 truck itself was I think it was 130 or 120. I mean it was it wasn't one of these 30 dollar cheap things. But but if you're Clarence, you said you. We got we we get those from. Yeah, uh, there might be other. I didn't know if uh, Hydro Co-op's got any or any other farm store, but uh, this one it just we wanted one that was straight as an arrow and good enough so that you could put something on it that would you know ride it up and down and and good tires on it and stuff so you you know you're not running around a little warehouse and stuff. I got a friend of mine that lost his hives because. There's some kind of disease that's going around. Yeah. Do you have a problem with that? Oh yeah, yeah. It's it's most of it is pesticides. 
I mean, there's insects, there's these varroa mites that get on their back and take the blood out of them. We can, we can take care of that. I mean, we've got uh, ways to, uh, like, like those, those uh, mites grow only on the males, on drones. So we'll take frames of drone root out and just scrape them so we get rid of the mites. I mean, that's one way to do it. Or you put chemicals in, we'd, we'd rather not do that, but that's no way. But there's a lot of, um, um, especially golf courses in the springtime that just cover the whole course with um, anti-grub kinds of chemicals, you know, and, and uh, those things drift and, and if they drift onto dandelions or on the edge of the course, then these bees get it. And what, how it affects them is it destroys their uh, nervous system so they can't find their way back to the hive. So, you know, all of a sudden you, you end up with no bees. So it's, so there's a, the thing that I don't like to see is I don't want to, I mean, we're part of agriculture too, and you don't want to see you know, us versus the farmers kind of deal, because, uh, I mean, we work with a lot of growers, and a lot of them don't spray at nine o'clock at night after dark, you know, just to, so they're not affecting these boxes or bees that are around. But then there's other people who spray at noontime, you know, and uh, so it's, so you got to do it in some kind of cooperative way. And now the, the people that make pesticides are trying to develop things that are selective on bugs, you know, not, won't affect something that touches the flowers and stuff. So it's, it's kind of a hot, hot little issue. Other things? Jim, thank you. Thank you very much for your attendance. Thank you.